How's it going, everyone? It is once again time to talk about some rage. Some rage that's going on from your and my favorite publisher in Ubisoft. I know you guys love giving Ubisoft your money. I know you guys have pre-purchased your double XP boost in Assassin's Creed Red. I know you guys have pre-purchased the next 10 upcoming $40 season passes from them just because we love them so much. No, but seriously, there's a lot of rage going on uh, as far as Star Wars Outlaws, the season pass, the release structure, and we are going to talk all about it in this video. Now, what Star Wars Outlaws Outlaws is doing, as far as its release structure, isn't something new from Ubisoft. If you go back just a few months ago, they released Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, and it had literally the exact same edition structure in the sense that the base game was $70, the deluxe edition was $110, I believe it's called the Gold Edition, and then there was an Ultimate Edition for $130. I remember ahead of that game's release, I was talking about how wild that was, but a lot of people weren't really mentioning it when it came to Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. I have a guess as to why that is. You guys want to hear what that guess is? Because nobody cares about Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. I'm sorry, it is what it is, but the idea of a Star Wars open world game, Star Wars being one of the biggest IPs on planet Earth, I don't know if people consider like Avatar that big, um, you know, I personally don't, and I just got this sense as we were heading into the release of that game that that game wasn't going to do all too well commercially. I don't know how it's done, but it's a game that I just didn't sense that level of interest. Obviously, Star Wars Outlaws was going to have a heightened level of interest, and you could tell that way before the various editions were revealed, but... When you know that Ubisoft is working on it, you know that there's some nonsense that could be on the horizon. And now with a game as big as Star Wars Outlaws, it seems like this is the one that has enraged a lot more people with their release structure. But this isn't anything new. Now, to play, uh, you know, fair here, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora did not do the early access gimmick. It was released, I believe it didn't do the early access gimmick. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it didn't do the early access gimmick where uh, the Gold Edition and the Ultimate Edition were released on the same day as the Standard Edition. It was just egregiously expensive. Oh, and by the way, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora with $110 edition, it also had a season pass valued at $40 with upcoming content. So keep that in mind as well. This isn't something completely new. And if you look at, pa at the past with what they've done with Assassin's Creed, same thing. Um, Assassin's Creed really didn't get that level of backlash. Um, I know some people are definitely on my side when I think Assassin's Creed has, um, you know, it's not the Assassin's Creed that I knew and loved. Let's just put it that way. Way, but I also know a lot of people love AC Origins, a lot of people love Odyssey, it seems like Valhalla is a little bit more divisive, but I know a lot of people are super into those games. Mirage was a little bit more up my alley where it was more of a contained experience, $50, and a little bit on the shorter side, and that's what I like to see out of Assassin's Creed. But not to go on that tangent with uh, Star Wars Outlaws, there has been a lot of rage, and the rage continues because now we are starting to get an idea of what that narrative season pass is going to contain, and one of the key elements of it is, and it notes, play the exclusive job Jabba's Gambit mission at launch. Just as Kay is putting together a crew for the Canto Bite heist, she receives a job from Jabba the Hutt himself. Turns out that ND5 owes Jabba a debt from years ago, and he has come to collect. Now, uh, I don't know the extent of this content. We don't know a lot at this point, but what it does note, and I find this rather interesting, is play the exclusive Jabba's Gambit mission at launch. What does that mean at launch? Does that mean that this will be available at launch for free? For the, no, for quote unquote free. I mean, you're spending $100. Um, and it'll be available for people that spend $110. And then will it be a free update down the line? Will it be a paid update for people that dare to spend $70? When people ask me why I push back on the early access gimmick, and they're like, Dude, it's just three days early access. You're making a big deal out of it, dude. Why do you have to rage about everything, dude? This is why. Because you give them an inch. You give them an inch of allowing early access, not pushing back on this early access gimmick. They realize... Bro, you're okay with that? And look at what Ubisoft is doing right out the gate. Exclusive content locked out at launch with you spending $110 on the Gold Edition. The Gold Edition gives you that early access, and I don't know what's going to be the story about this Jabba's Gambit mission, but right out the gate, guys, right out the gate, they are locking content. This is content that is ready to go at launch, and right out the gate, you got to spend $110. This is why I push
push back on this nonsense. And so many of you guys in the comment section that I see is just like, he's raging for that. Look, I get it. That some of you guys think I just rage for views, and yeah, part of it is you guys enjoy the rage. But is this not worth raging about? We talk about video games on this channel. Obviously, I'm going to be upset about certain things, certain topics in gaming, and you guys think I'm making too big of a deal out of early access, dude. You just like to complain, dude. No. If you let things like this slide, especially with a publisher like Ubisoft, they are going to take that inch and then they're ultimately going to take mile after mile after mile and slowly you're just going to be normalized to it and you're going to be like, yeah, this is how gaming's supposed to be, guys. $70 games with $40 season passes. I love Ubisoft. Obviously, most of you guys that can use at least one brain cell will realize why I am popping off at Ubisoft like this, but it seems like some of you guys can't realize how bad and how how dangerous stuff like this can be because they will keep pushing, they will keep pushing, they will continue to fundamentally change game design like they did with Assassin's Creed and don't even tell me that's not what happened because that is exactly what's happened to prioritize purchasing microtransactions and that's why I rage at my boy. Look, I love you, dude. I know you're watching this video. I know by the time this video comes out, probably an hour after, I'm gonna get a text message from you by saying stuff like, you're poor, go make more money, yada, yada, yada. Bro, you were raging about Diablo 4 for so long, and how quickly did you run back to that game and immediately spend money on that game? Don't make me out you right now for how much of a whale you are, but... Obviously, right now, I'm just raging at my boy that he knows he's a whale. I know he's a whale. My entire friend circle knows he's a whale, but it's because Ubisoft values whales like that so much where they are spending so much money on these games where them buying a game for $70 or $110 in this case with Star Wars Outlaws, that means so much more to them. A whale buying a game, that could be valued as selling five copies of said game of $70 because that whale will spend $300 fifty dollars over the time with you know various cosmetic purchases double xp boost content updates and stuff that have may have been in the past accessible to games now look i am not all against this is not a blanket uh, tangent against monetization, extra monetization on games. I'm not bugging out over Shadow of the Air Tree coming out for $40 on Elden Ring. I'm not bugging out that Stellar Blade, they said that that game's not gonna have microtransactions and a lot of DLC content's gonna be free, but if they decide to release crossover costumes where they're working with other publishers and other game developers to, let's say, get a, uh, get a costume that's based on a different franchise, they might charge for that. Um, I'm not bugging out about that. It's all about managed greed. I get it that you guys gotta make money on these games. I get it that you guys are a business at the end of the day, but $40 season passes, locked content, day one on release, early access gimmickry, we gotta call this out, and I'm so happy that it seems like the majority of you guys, like, can utilize one brain cell, but it shocks me how many people are just like, yeah, bro, just give them all my money. Give them all my money. I love battle passes. I love $70 games with $40 expansions day one that they're already selling. Lock content day one that you can already get. And obviously, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Helldivers 2 is a game that's $40, and it's getting battle passes every month. But uh, every month. But that game also offers you a very easy way uh, to get super credits, the premium currency, by just playing the game. And on top of that, it's a budget title. And on top of that, they didn't have a $110 $130 Ultimate Edition, the highest end edition was 60 bucks that you could get cheaper on other platforms, but I digress. And on top of all of that, all of that, if you want to play this game on PC, it ain't even gonna be on Steam. It ain't gonna be on Steam. It's going to be a Ubisoft Connect exclusive initially. I'm sure it'll come out on Steam sometime down the line, but you gotta go to Ubisoft Connect. Why are they doing that? Well, they want to pop off with their own platform. They want to promote their Ubisoft Connect subscription service, which you can make the argument, hey, you can pay $18 a month and you can access this game. Ain't nobody trying to rent this game. If they want to play it, I mean, maybe there are people out there that want to rent the game, but I'm not about these renting games anymore. I'm not even big. Like, I love Game Pass from a value standpoint, but these days, I'm just like, bro, I really want to own the games that I really enjoy. Like, I own Persona 3 Reload. I wasn't going to play that game through Game Pass, even though I think it's fantastic that that game's offered through Game Pass. I can, you know, uh, appreciate the value that that offers. Um, you know, I appreciate Ayun Chronicle going to be in Game Pass, but I'm going to buy that game as well. Uh, you know, with the, the subscription services are are great for some people and they can enjoy them but for me personally i do like to own my games and i i say that while having a ps plus extra subscription and a game pass subscription concurrently and there's definitely times where i'll dabble in and 
you know, a Dave the Diver coming out on PS Plus or some of the smaller titles like Citizen Sleeper. When that came out on Xbox, I played that on Game Pass and then I ultimately bought the game as well because I liked it so much. But I digress. The rage with Star Wars Outlaws, I think, is absolutely warranted and I will continue pushing back on it. And this is the stuff that, again, when you give them an inch, they are going to take a mile. And Ubisoft has taken several miles that I feel like some of you guys are like, it's just early access, dude. You guys have just gotten normalized to the nonsense. It's just double XP that's baked into the game, dude. Like, uh, it's just nonsense uh, that I feel like I read in the comments section where people, like, maybe I do rage a little bit on the camera. If I talk, like, but, like, honestly, if you guys talk to some of my friends in real life, the, I, I'm a little bit of a character in real life. So if some of you guys think I'm playing it up for the microphone. And, yes, it is a little bit of that, but I do rage about this stuff. And, uh, you know, that's why people on my personal Discord uh, have to lower my audio volume to like 50% because I just rage and yell all the time. But that is gonna do it for me again. You guys might think I'm a broken record, but it seems like most of you guys enjoy the raging videos or not. I feel like I was relatively tame for my standards in this video, but like you guys probably disagree. I feel like it is good that we continue to talk about it because the more eyes that are aware of this, the more people that are aware of this, I should say, uh, the better it is for at least voicing that this stuff ain't okay. And uh, you know, that you will push back ultimately how will that affect commercial numbers i don't know but we've seen nonsense like this affect commercial numbers in the past look at a suicide squad look at some of these other games skull and bones that have come out and been complete flops will that deter ubisoft from doing nonsense in the future i don't know but at the very least i could try i could do some fun videos and that's all i'm here to do that'll do it for me sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below as always thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.